Hey everyone, Mario again, coming at you another review. As you can tell from up there, it's another episode of Second Time Around. And uh, this time I'm coming at you with a film I reviewed a couple years ago. I think I did it for uh, Monster Fest. I think the year that the film, it says the film came out. But this film has two different release dates. It says 1, 2010, and the other one says 2011. It even says it differently on IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes. It's, but the release date on Wikipedia is 2010, but I'm guessing that's outside of it because I don't think I saw this film until 2011, which is the Rotten Tomatoes release date. But anyway, the film, of course, is Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, and it is a horror comedy. And I have to say, this is one of those horror comedies that strikes the right even balance of them. And I have to say, this is definitely a film that deserves the title Game Changer because this in my opinion did what they were trying to do with Cabin in the Woods but even though I do like that film to a point up until the ending this one succeeded a little bit better than that one and I'll probably address that whenever I revisit Cabin in the Woods but let me just say that the main thing that this one has over that is that it does the characters a little bit better it plays with the audience a little bit more and it makes fun of the horror conventions better because with Cabin in the Woods it seems like they're trying to make fun of them, but they're using them at the same time, and the balance is just off. And also a couple of little suggestions in, in that film I think would have made the film better. The film that we had would have been stronger with one thing, and I think the ending would have been better if they had modified it slightly. But I'll get to that eventually. Now the film is written and directed by Eli Craig, and he wrote it with Morgan Jurgensen. And from what I've read, this is was his first major film. I mean, he done like a short film, and I think since then he's done the TV movie, but it's a great directorial debut. Now, now it's online scores. It has a 7.6 on IMDb, and I have to say it definitely does that more. On Rotten Tomatoes, it has an 84 with both the audience and the critics. Think about that. How often do the scores on Rotten Tomatoes from both sides even out? They don't usually. This is the consensus. Like the best horror comedies, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil minds its central crazy joke for some incredible scares, laughs, and believe it or not, heart. And I have to say, that's the big thing about this film. It does have a heart to it. And part of it's coming from the fact that it's making fun of the cliches we know in this genre, and also the characters a little bit. And which I'll get to that in a second. Now, the film stars uh, Tyler Labine as Dale, Alan Tiedek as Tucker, Katrina Bowden as Allison with an I, Jesse Moss as Chad, uh, Chilan Simmons as Chloe, Philip Granger as the Sheriff, Brandon May McLaren as Jason, and there's some other ones like Karen Ray, Tal Evans, and even the director is a small cameo. Now, uh, I think I should probably talk about the main stars first. Now, Tyler Laban, he look he. I'm checking to see if I recognize him or anything, but... Uh, okay, that's where I recognize him from, because he was in Rise of the Planet of the Apes. He played Robert Franklin. If I remember right, wasn't that one of the lab guys? And that's the only other movie I've seen that I recognize him in. I like him better on this one, but I'd say he's one of those actors I don't mind. His episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Silent Servant, I don't remember that. Other TV work, Sabrina Teenage Witch, Dark Angel... Twilight Zone in 03, Jake 2.0, Mad Love, Deadbeat, so he's done a lot of TV work and some minor, and some film work as well. Then Alan uh, <coughs> Tucker, he's also, <coughs> excuse me there, he's also done some TV work, he was in the show Firefly and also its uh, movie counterpart, he was in A Knight's Tale. Which, if I remember the character he was in that film, I liked him in that. He was in Hearts in Atlantis, which I haven't seen. And I remember him from Dodgeball, a true underdog story, as Steve the Pirate. <laughs> I love this character in that film. He was in Death at a Funeral, 310 to Yuma. After this film, he was a voice role in Transformers Dark of the Moon. He played Stephen A. Douglas in Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. He was King Candy in Wreck-It Ralph. He was a Duke in Frozen. He voiced Superman this year in Justice League War. So he's been done doing a lot of work. He also did TV work, like he was Barry Allen on Batman the Brave and the Bold, and he was Oliver Queen on Young Justice. 
So he's done some D, a lot of some DC stuff. So makes me wonder if he's he does that good with the voiceover work. Makes me wonder how he would handle a live action DC role. But then be like, who'd you cast him as? Now uh, both of them have a good back and forth. You believe them as lifelong friends, and they are the heart. They are the central heart of this film because. In most horror films, when you involve redneck characters, usually they are the bad guys. Prime example would be the Texas Chainsaw Massacre series. They're not stereotypical good old boys, but they're backcountry guys. And I guess you could say that the character Dale is kind of like how Leatherface is, only Dale is a lot smarter than Leatherface because he doesn't have that mental disability Leatherface does, at least in uh, the original series. But he also has something weird like me that I can relate with, and that is remember, you may not be good at certain book stuff, like for me it's math, but you can remember some of the weirdest facts, and that comes into play at the end of the film. Now, the funny thing about this is that they're the protagonists in this film, whereas in most films they'd be the antagonist, and they also are college students who in most horror films like this would be the protagonists and we'd sympathize with them as they're killed off one by one and this one they basically become the antagonists especially one which I'm gonna double check to make sure I'm saying the right one it's Chad because the mo from the beginning you can tell definitely this guy's gonna become the antagonist and by the end we find out why I'm not gonna spoil it for those of you who haven't seen the movie but with the humor of the film I think it's an interesting little plot twist and it fits right in with the tone that the film has but a lot of the humor just comes from the fact we know in this type of movie what's going to happen. Like, in most films where the hillbillies are the antagonists, some moment someone approaches the house, the guy's going to come out with a weapon and go to kill him. Like, when we use Texas Chainsaw Massacre again, you know, the guy goes into the house, then when he goes in the back room, Leatherface comes out and hits him in the head with it, hits him in the head with a sledgehammer. Or in the reboot, or in the re 2003 reboot, he comes out of the, he chases them out of the house with the chainsaw and then cuts off one of their legs. And this one, in one scene, uh, uh, Tucker is trying to cut a log in half, he cuts into a beehive, the bees are coming after him and he has a chainsaw, so he's running around, he's running from them, you know, trying to get them to get away with the chainsaw, and from the way he's running around with the bees chasing him, it looks like he's running at the guy approaching the house with the chainsaw. It's, I know, it, it sounds funny, but when they, you watch it in the film, it is a lot funnier than that, and that's just one example. And then a scene later with the sheriff where they're dragging the body out of the wood chipper, it's just stuff like that. And the characters have a good back and forth. The character of Allison, I do like with her that she's not, not not a stereotypical character we've seen in these films. I mean, her friends are basically characters we've seen in a bunch of horror films, but the actors play it off okay. I mean, they don't not a lot of them stand out. I mean, we got the dumb blonde-like character with the high heels. Chad's probably the only one that stands out, but that's because of the thing involving him, which I'm not going to spoil. But he's kind of headstrong, and well, not kind of. He's super headstrong, and you can tell. This guy had a bad childhood just from the way he's all, you know, this is what we got to do. And most uh, films with that, he'd probably be the one that you'd expect to be the hero. I mean, the guy, like if it was a Friday the 13th film, you'd expect he'd be the one in the end that'd fight Jason. At least in the male characters. Allison, she's written kind of mo a little bit like how some protagonists in these films are, but you could tell that she's not scared of Tucker and Dale once she gets to know, know them. And I do like that... She actually does glow, glow, grow close to the character of Dale, and by the end they do have a romantic relationship. And you do believe it from how they go, because Allison was raised on a farm, so she does kind of identify with Dale a little bit there. And she goes pa and she can see past the fear that she and her friends had at the very beginning of the film when they see them at first at the truck stop. Part of it because Dale was holding a sickle when he was talking to them about camping and all that. And that's another word, another part of the heart comes from the relationship between Dale and Allison. And just all around a very fun film. The cinematography is great. It was made on a budget of about, doesn't say, but it's made about five, not even five million. If that's lower than the budget, that's a sad. Because I think this movie should have made more at the box office. But then again, I don't think it was playing around where I am. Because I don't even think I heard about this film until after its theatrical run. But then I could be wrong. And like I said at the beginning of this review, this is definitely a game changer one. If they made more horror comedy films with this type of vibe, then again that might become a cliche eventually, but with vi with the tone and heart more like this, with its mind in the right place, then I think the genre would be in a lot better uh, 
a lot better uh, place than it is now, or even just straight up horror films more like this. And I don't want to give everything away in this film, even though I probably could just by lifting up something, but because it's definitely a film I recommend you seeing. I mean, I think I have a DVD or of it somewhere, but I watched it on Encore, where one of the Encore channels. Last night it was on. I'm like, you know, I've been meaning to rewatch this film and watch it. Had a very fun time with it. The film's not that long. It's only about 89 minutes, so not even an hour and a half, just a little less than that. And I'll say another thing I like about Tucker and Dale is that they are not stereotypical rednecks. You know, whenever you think of stereotypical good old boys, you know, it's like, duck to the gun, and where's my... The only real stereotypical things about them is a little bit of their attire, but since they live out in what would be considered the boonies, I guess it makes sense to dress like that. And also the fact they drink beer, but then again, non-good old boys drink beer, so... I mean, college kids who see in there drink beer, but that's kind of a stereotype that has some truth in it, but... The only one we really see drink a lot of beer is uh, Tucker in a couple of points that actually makes sense after the bee incident and then later on when he gets attacked by the college kids. And of course at the very end of the film, but it makes sense for them to have beer because they're out, you know, in a vacation home basically. And that's basically what the plot of the film is. They're going out to their vacation home. The college kids are going out on vacation. They Their paths cross. Allison ends up being knocked out in the water. They rescue her. Some couple of her friends see it. And, of course, if you know the genre, you can automatically assume what they think. And they're like, we got your friend, trying to tell her. And that's also where some of the humor comes. It's just some of the dialogue that we know the context of as the audience. But as we watch the film, we're like, okay, they're going to misinterpret this. Like, leaving a message, we have your friend. <laughs> it's like, okay, now we know what they're thinking. And then how some of the college kids die in just weird manners. I know that's a minor spoiler, but you're going to figure, with misunderstandings, a couple people are going to die. And by the end, of course, the whole thing with uh, the little psychology uh, talk, that actually adds to it, too, and continues the misunderstanding a little bit. But that's about all I'm going to go into it. If you have seen Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, you know entirely what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the humor and all that. If you haven't, like I said, it comes... Well, my recommendation, if you have Encore, whether on demand or whatever, try to watch it, whether or not you have to wait for it to come back on again, or just go to, to your on-demand thing and watch it. I know it was on Netflix for a while. I don't know if it's still on there, but if it is, whether you, whether you have Instant or still do the disc one, which I don't know how many people do that still, or both, definitely one I'd say you watch through Netflix. If you, if you can find it through Redbox, definitely. If you have to buy it to watch it, it definitely comes with my recommendation. It's definitely a film I do plan on getting in my collection normally. Uh, I don't know if the DVD has features or whatnot, but it's still a film I'd want to get in my collection because it's a very fun film. One that I could definitely see myself re-watching time and time again and uh, not being bored with it. It's just I think it should have made a little bit more money. At least It looks like it at least made enough money to uh, get to do a sequel because that Horror Hound weekend this year... Uh, Tyler and Alan both said that a sequel was in development. It makes me wonder what the sequel could involve. Are they going to bring in other things? Are they going to have to actually deal with a psycho killer this time? Are they going to have to deal with zombies or something? Or another group of kids? If they do another group of kids, it might come out as a rehash. So it makes me wonder what it could be. Because, uh, like I mentioned earlier, most films, they'd be the bad guys. So how would you take that? How would you take them and put them in a different scenario, I guess? We'll just have to wait and see the trailer and see what they do. But, again, something like Zombies or something else would be interesting if you could do it right. And I have a feeling they'll probably do it right. I mean, at the very least, still a sequel will probably still be good to see these characters back, even if the rest of the film doesn't come off as well. But we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, my rating for Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, I give it a 5 out of 5 because there's not really any major issues. I mean... Some of the some of the college kids' characters are ones we've seen in a type of characters we've seen in other horror films, but that's part of the humor of the film, so it's not really a negative. Does have some good practical effects usage. I didn't really notice a lot of CGI, but then again, there's not really a lot of elaborate stuff. The only times there were CGI was like for the bees and all that stuff. They probably could have done practical, but for safety reasons, didn't. Like I said, the, the directing is great. Uh, the acting is great and all that, so not really much to complain about. Like I said, uh, comes with my recommendation.